Stan Jabalisco here. Uh, perhaps you've heard the term peak envelope power, or PEP, in regards to radio frequency power amplifiers, and in, particularly, in particular, the expression is used in amateur radio practice. Peak envelope power. Well, first of all, what exactly does this term mean? Envelope. What the heck does that mean? Well, <laughs> when you modulate a radio wave to convey information, the resulting function, the resulting radio frequency signal versus time, if you were able to graph it, for example, watching it on an oscilloscope, you will get a picture of what they call the modulation envelope. Now I'm not exactly sure where the term envelope comes from. I think that it comes from the fact that when you modulate a signal you are in a sense enveloping the data, encoding the data. But that's just my guess. I really don't know, but that's what it's called, a modulation envelope. Now for different signals the modulation envelope will vary. If you have the radio frequency signal like the radio wave itself and you graph it versus time, let's just say though that you graph it at intervals of one second. So one second, two, three, four, and the radio signal goes along at millions and millions of hertz or millions of cycles per second. For example, on the 40 meter amateur radio band, your signal is going to uh, go along at about um, 7 million hertz or 7 megahertz. So if you were to graph the RF signal versus time for just a steady carrier wave, what you would get basically is a rectangle kind of a solid rectangle that would that would just look like this. The waves themselves are going up and down at such a, a rapid rate that in fact uh, they're not going to show up individually at all on a graph where time intervals are by the second like this. You're just going to see something like that well, in that case, that's what the modulation envelope looks like. Of course, there's no modulation, so one might argue how can you have an envelope of something that doesn't exist. But if, on the other hand, you break the signal up, for example, Morse code, then you will get rectangles that vary in length with the dots and dashes as time goes on, but they will still peak at this level right here and right here. So you can call the peak envelope power this distance. You can define it as this distance and then you can in some way or another calibrate this scale here in watts, radio frequency watts. So for example if you have a transmitter with a 100 watt steady carrier output and you just key it and leave it keyed for a steady carrier then your PEP would be 100 watts. If on the other hand you break that signal up into Morse code elements your PEP, your peak envelope power is still going to be 100 watts even though your average power is going to go down. Now suppose on the other hand that you decide to modulate that signal with a voice instead of uh, keying it with Morse code. I'm just going to kill that Windows journal file entirely rather than try to erase everything because in my experience I have found that that's a whole lot easier. Here's the same graph, time, radio frequency, power. Now if you have a voice you're going to get a modulation envelope that looks kind of like this. <laughs>
If you've ever seen a single sideband signal, now I'm referring in particular here to a single sideband voice signal, like you will hear on the amateur radio bands. If you pause in the speech, there's no signal at all. On the other hand, if you shout, you will reach the peaks. And these are the peaks in this particular example. So your PEP -E would be defined like that. The peak envelope power in watts, radio frequency watts on that axis, and time on this axis, and again, increments of about a second. So the waves themselves on the, indivi on the individual waves in the carrier of the signal or the actual RF energy are just squished so closely together in this graph that they just blur into that green thingy there. So that is kind of what a voice signal looks like. And you'll know, notice that the ratio of the peak envelope power to the average power, what is the average power? Maybe some, something along this line here. The ratio of the peak envelope power to the average power in a voice signal goes from about 2 to 1 to 3 to 1. That is to say the peak envelope power is about 2 or 3 times the average power. Now you can use various techniques to boost the average power of a voice signal without increasing the peak envelope power. That is known as speech compression. There are other techniques, speech clipping, various forms of speech processing. But you've got to be careful if you're going to do that in an amateur radio setting because number one too much speech compression will make you hard to understand it'll a little bit of speech uh, compression will increase the punch the presence of your signal but too much uh, and uh, you're going to get into trouble that decreases the ratio of the PEP to the average power or one might say increases the ratio of the average to the peak envelope power to maybe something like 1.5 to 1. But uh, if you compress the speech too much, you're going to make yourself difficult to understand, and you're going to run the risk of peak clipping on the radio frequency signal. And if you do that, you're going to get a very undesirable phenomenon that you may have heard from time to time called splatter. Splatter, where your signal uh, creates static like noise way above and below its legal passband of about 2.7 kilohertz wide. So you don't want that to happen. Now in the case of a CW or Morse code signal, and that's kind of weird, you know, CW, Morse code, oops, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to kill it start over once again. So in the case of a single sideband signal that's uncompressed, the ratio of the PEP to the average power is around 2 or 3 to 1. In the case of a CW signal or a Morse code, which really isn't a continuous wave, it's a keyed wave. That's kind of strange. The ratio of the peak envelope power to the average power is generally about 2 to 1 because your key is down about half the time, and that's during an actual transmission. In the case of, a, um, in, in the case of modes like phase shift keying or frequency shift keying, commonly used with radio teletype, Multiple frequency shift keying, which I think is kind of a cool mode. WSJT, another form of multiple frequency shift keying, a synchronous mode. Or frequency modulation, FM. In the case of all of these, 
your ratio is going to be about 1 to 1, well, exactly 1 to 1. Because you're actually sending out a steady carrier, you're just either shifting the phase or the frequency. And yet your, your transmitter is key down at 100% all the time. So SSB and CW are in fact forms of amplitude modulation. C, uh, S single sideband is an analog amplitude modulation method. CW is a digital amplitude modulation method. And phase shift keying and, and all of these are actually uh, frequency or phase modulation methods. There is one other form of modulation that's sometimes used called pulse modulation, PM. There's various forms of that. Those duty cycles vary, or ratios of PEP to average power. So the ratio of the PEP to the average power is roughly the inverse of the duty cycle of the signal. So keep that in mind. Um, the amateur radio legal power limit is 1500 watts PEP. That means on single sideband, your average power maximum legal limit is going to be somewhere around, uh, this is the output, somewhere around half that or one third that, 500 to 750 watts average. But on these modes, CW and all of the rest of these, you can actually have a key down 1500 watt signal. And believe me, a 1500 watt signal on CW will get through an awful lot of garbage on the ham radio bands, but don't use that kind of power on modes like phase shift keying because you'll become very unpopular very quickly. Phase shift keying operators like to use low power, which I also favor, by the way. I, I like that method. QRP. So for now, I think I've yammered at you long enough, but I hope I've given you some understanding of what the term peak envelope power actually means. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey 1 Golf Victor. Until next time, 73, which means best regards, and so long.